Hi everyone, I'm Jerry Shields. I'm your 2K21 superintendent and uh, I have been uh, on a little bit of a break since December. Uh, busyness of the holidays and all the craziness with COVID. I haven't had a lot of time to do some golf stuff, but I've just recently got back into it a little bit. And I've had a lot of questions on my YouTube channel here about uh, different things, uh, the status of some of the courses, what I'm working on. Do I have any, anything that's available to play yet? Um, questions about the uh, example course I started developing called Blackwater Canyon, which is what's in front of us here. And also about uh, another course that I did in, in uh, West Virginia that involved taking some uh, raw LIDAR data, some some topographical information and trying to build a course in a real life landscape. So I'm going to show you a little bit of both. I'm also going to go into a little bit of some details of of how you carry a project forward. There's there's several phases, you know, I always call the bulldozer phase where you start to build your golf course. There's uh, a phase where you start to root the course. There's another phase where you start to landscape things a little more and lay out where the greens and tees and do some minor adjustments to uh, the train. And then there's a very long stage. And that's the stage I'm in right now at Blackwater Canyon is that next part where you actually start to do planting, uh, the fine grading, um, starting to check stuff like sight lines and, and so forth. But anyway, instead of talking about it I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to show it to you so um, last uh, I left this off uh, oh, just one more note too is that uh, I mistakenly published Blackwater Canyon way back when I was just about to start adding some details so what might be a really interesting thing for you to do is to to take a look on uh, the course listings and look for Blackwater Canyon because you're going to see the version that I last left off with that has very little work done has a few fairways carved out gives you a rough idea of what it looks like when you're in that process uh, I don't think it's playable you can try to play it but you're going to find out there's features missing and things that are flat and things uh, greens aren't shaped that type of thing but it at least will give you a, a taste of what a course looks like when it's in that development stage so uh, I did publish that by mistake as I was trying to transfer courses between computers and as a result you can kind of see how it looks when you start to evolve so so let's get right down to it I'm just going to go to a few holes on this course and then a few holes on on the West Virginia course that I'm working on and, and give you an idea of how these things work out so uh, with this design the concept was if I go back and look big picture was I had this river that came into this kind of canyon that was high on both sides you can see on the that far slope and that far slope and I want to tuck a golf course tucked in the middle and you can start to see how it's coming together now and uh, I've done a decent amount of work I'm getting close to where I want to be for fairways bunker placement so forth but I'm going hole by hole and uh, let's just take a look at a, a few holes here you know obviously number one I'm just starting to get into adding features like cart paths and doing a little more shaping on the fairway you can see I've added some bunkers I'm doing a little bit of tree work you can see some different varieties of tree species you can really see this hole starting to look really cozy here uh, lots of slope in the landing area giving the player some options with some wide uh, uh, areas to place the ball left or right before they come into this green that's tucked in this fine tiny little area here uh, we've got a bit of a kidney shaped green here with elevation on the right side and a bunker on the left and uh, and you can kind of see through in the background there and I think sometimes you know wide open space isn't a bad thing I've been going through and you can see I, I'm not finished yet but you can take a look at the rough how I've done some coloring here I've actually uh, shaded in heavy rough there and then I have it transition to the natural type of landscape that the game has in the background. You can see I still have some work to do on, on leveling out cart paths and so forth. But this is early stages of just starting to get to planting and thinking about final details for this green. And like I said, you want to make sure that uh, there is a visual aspect of this that you're your planting looks good and you can see that I haven't done anything too fancy with the, the sun angle here that this is straight wall sun coming down from above and I'm, I'm letting the course speak for itself as well as the uh, type of planting and trees and I really like the looks of these tropical trees they look really lush they look really detailed uh, if you do have wind uh, then you can also see uh, how the how the wind uh, moves those branches around it becomes really lifelike so one thing I started working on is I, I had kind of this terrain that I thought when I looked off in the distance this brownish looking looks kind of a dry arid type of feel to it and so I got this idea that you know I might uh, build a, a couple fire towers up in the distance just to kind of see here and there so you can see that I have uh, built a fire tower right there and that is one of them and you can see how it overlooks uh, the valley and also how it comes into play with the water so I think that's kind of a really interesting feature and, and where that comes into play is all the way down here on, on number two 
is if uh, you take a look and, and you, you can see off in the distance there when you're playing number two that you've got this fire tower that's overlooking this little par three. And I did put a bunch of dead trees, as you can see in the background, and this kind of adds a little bit of texture, some colored trees. Left a little bit of space as well, a few shrubs. Uh, I still have some work to do, probably right in the foreground actually behind the green there. I want to do something with that area. It looks a little bit plain, but I'm trying to get that hillside looking kind of how I want it to look. And when you're on that green, looking through kind of some of those dead trees, uh, you can see that fire tower in the distance. And I thought that was a really cool look to this hole and, and something a little bit different. I, I find often courses these days, the designs are coming out are, are so good and a lot of strategy in play that those those off the actual course features are, are, are some of the things that actually make a course really interesting. So, uh, and then uh, coming down to this hole here, uh, still some work to do. I haven't even put really water into this. Uh, well, it's, it's going to be a river. Uh, this fairway, uh, a reachable par five. Uh, you see, I've got the water down towards the green, but not up at the tee deck yet. Uh, playing with the idea of a spillway, water behind, in front of the green, beside the green. Really interesting uh, risk reward, reachable five. And uh, again, still some work to do on the planting. But one thing I want you to, to, to keep in mind when you're designing the holes is when you're on the green, what does it look like? So I would come down to the green here. I'd look in the background. It used to be kind of some really bad looking uh, unkept areas back here. I, I've, I've put the green grass in there. The plan is I'm going to go back up there and plant that with a lot of shrubs and, and undergrowth so that it fills that space in back there. It's not really a playable space, but it is a highly visual space. And and I may plant a few, uh, obviously, some, some water plants along the edge there and a little bit into that uh, that rock face that carves uh, through the river. But then I just take a look around the green. I take a look, here's my flag, and I look backwards. And, and the same thing here, this area really is not in play. And I will fill that in with shrubs and grasses and maybe a few wildflowers. And I just wanna make sure that the look is interesting from all aspects. So you can see that I've got kind of a neat look here from the green. And uh, and if I look back from the green here again, you can kind of see that fire tower that's up in the distance there. So. Um, when you build a hole and you're into the fine details, that's what you're doing is you're looking at it from all different angles. And then I had a par four. Uh, this is a reachable four. Uh, again, you're flirting with water on the left side. Uh, some a little bit of treacherous bunker work, a bit of a, a tricky green. And and again, the background, you can see that car path. I've just started to work on, on stuff that's in the, in the background there. That grass area is going to be filled in with trees eventually. At this stage, I'm adding a few trees now and then. I'll just use my mouse here and, and show you know a, a couple of these trees I have actually added in uh, already just to, just to see if I can get a feel you know this this odd colored tree here experimenting with different looks and colors so when you're on the tee deck and you're you're looking towards uh, the green let me get past this here stuck in the trees <laughs> and you're on a tee deck here and you're looking down the fairway I want to make sure it's visually interesting that it's filled in uh, I can still see a little bit of work to do behind the green there. You can see kind of those browns areas there, this brown area in there. I'm likely going to add some some texture, some color. Not sure if I like the red. I kind of like it, but I'm going to see uh, this shrub. I'm debating as to whether or not it's just uh, needs to go. It's an obstacle. A lot of almost, I would say 98% of the trees on this course were were random trees that were already on the property. And what I like to do is I like to build the course through the trees. It feels more natural than than clearing out all the trees and and adding it in the end. So these are almost entirely all trees that the game put in place and like I said I think that shrub's likely going to go and uh, you can look down the river there and see out beyond so you know when I walk through the course some interesting holes five is a, a, a par four uphill a rather challenging you know you've got an option to go right side and, and get a better angle into the green from over here this type of strategy stuff you can look towards the green see how the bunkers are left side of the green over here whereas if you play over here which is a little safer you're now having to clear those two front bunkers with a bunker in the rear that's coming into play. So that's uh, something to look at here. And and I've kind of created a runway for those people that do place that ball on the right side of the fairway. You can see you've got an option to bounce it up and on. You may even roll along. You're going to have some short grass and uh, it gives the player some, some options. And then another hole. I haven't done much with this hole. I've looked at, I've actually planted a few trees. This is a par three. I kind of trying to get the framing right from the tee there. You know, I've added a tree here, a tree here. Um, I I can see a tee deck in the distance behind it. I like that. I've actually cleared out a few trees here so I can see there. And this is another hole down here in the background. I kind of, I like that look when you're on the green and you can see the other holes. And you can see if I'm on this green here, let me get the zoom right, that you actually can start to see a little bit around and you can see the hills in the distance and, and, and kind of how it looks on each hole really 
uh, sets up the feel of your golf course that, that goes beyond just each individual hole as its own entity. And another, uh, I think we got a par five here that is reachable in two, but you have one heck of a green to navigate. I did something here, and, and you know, a lot of the purists may not like it, but what I did do was I, uh, I went with a very straw, small green here, and, and there's a couple small greens on the course, and that is very deliberate. That My, my idea is that if you're going to go for it in two, it's going to take a miraculous shot to be on the green surface. Odds are you're going to be in the surround somewhere, chipping on with your third shot and hoping for a birdie or maybe an eagle if you can chip in. But uh, this, even though it's a short par five, um, let me see, what is it playing here? Let's see if I can get this to come back to me. If you just press the button, the right button here, you can bring up the settings. And this is a uh, 560 yards, so you're going to need a, a pretty good uh, two shots. It is downhill, but you can get there in two shots, and uh, and that's where it becomes really interesting. And I'm just going to go back and get rid of some of this stuff. There we go. And... Uh, yeah, and then you can see cart pass in the background I've been working on and, uh, and working our way through. I, I did have an interesting hole here I wanted to show you, and that is my uh, par 5 I've called the staircase. And uh, this hole is becoming more interesting. I have did a lot of changes to this. And it's called the staircase because it's a par 5. Originally, you had to take three shots. You'd play from the tee deck down into a landing area that was uh, somewhere down in this area by the bunker. You then had to climb a cliff, and that cliff is really steep. And if you end up so on the right side of this fairway, it's going to take options out of your hand for playing a, a low angle club. You want some trajectory to get over that hill. If you can nudge it in over the bunker and tuck it in the left side, you can see you got a way better approach uh, to that next uh, step up onto the next part of the hole. The green is now located here with some two pretty deep bunkers and a rock face behind it. When this hole, I originally designed it, the green was up here. But I, what I found is it was just too much uphill. It was definitely a three-shot hole. This one with a little bit of wind at your back, some strategy playing it onto the left side of that first part of the fairway, getting the angle through that gap and coming up. You could reach it in two with two really good shots. Otherwise, it's going to play like a three-shot hole. And if you just take the driver out and you drive it up in the middle of the fairway, um, I can guarantee that that's what you're going to be facing is something like that. And you're not going to get your three wood up and over that. You're going to have to go with a seven or eight iron and get up on the next fairway and be playing your third shot from this approach area. So a lot of strategy for a par five uh, uphill again, calling that one the staircase. Uh, par three, I'm still working on. I have a lot of work to do with that one still, just kind of generally shaping it out. I've got a halfway house where we're going to have some beverages available and and then uh, working on the back here, I've, I've done a little bit of hole work on this par par four, very long par four that you're uh, playing probably a four iron across the river and into this little bit of a green here. Again, I've been messing with the backgrounds and you can see I've got a lot of green grass there, a couple trees. I've cleared out in, in all the trees back in here because I like that look that you can you can see the next hole or actually one of the previous holes that you've already played running in behind because when you're on a real golf course, that's what it feels like. You see holes mixed in with other holes. It's very rare that each hole is played as its own little piece. Uh, I did do a lot of work on this hole here, a little par three, and it uh, carries over the river again that runs through this area. And uh, and I've been playing with some interesting features here, uh, different colors in the background, really trying to frame the shot uh, that I wanted to have something that really was eye-catching, different textures and colors in the trees. You know, I've got a hint of a, kind of a burnt uh, yellow-orange color there, a dead tree here. I've got a little bit of a, a feature here that uh, comes out of the... You can see a dead stump that comes out of that, uh, the bit of a ledge there with a little bit of actually a flowery growth that's grown into a crevice of that that stump. Uh, little features that as you get closer to the hole become a little more interesting. You can see the color really starts to come out here. I'm going to do some more planting off on the far left of this picture here, but you can see I've added a little bit of color here and there. The dead tree stands out. That stump definitely adds a little bit of texture. And looking back the other way, we get the same type of feel. You can see that I've got to this oddly shaped tree that's kind of hanging over the hole there along with the, the color and, and the, the fairway from the previous hole and the car path. It kind of paints a nice uh, picture and makes it interesting when you're sitting on that green that there's a lot to look at. You're not just playing this hole, but you've got kind of a, a visual sense. And when I look back, I haven't done anything at the tee deck surrounds. And you can see the difference. That, that's what it looks like when you haven't really added any detail and played with the planting. And this is what it looks like when you're starting to get closer and you want to have that nice visual feel when you're on that putting green and looking around. So you can see the difference that it makes. And again, on this part of the canyon, I, I've added another fire tower. Uh, you can see this one's got to add a little more detail to this one, but this is the tower. 
And uh, you can see that it, uh, I've used some camera towers, put them all together, put a little bit of a cupola at the top, and you can see how that overlooks um, this side of the canyon. And, and uh, if you get really clever and you look close enough, and you can't see it, but on the opposite side of that canyon is the other fire tower. And uh, most recent work, I've been playing with this, this next hole here and trying to get the look right off the tee. Again, a, a decent amount of work going into looking at what it looks like when I'm on this back deck. So I've had a little bit of color with different tree varieties, uh, things in the immediate foreground, as well as trees in the background to try to add some interest with some shadows. Still have to plant entirely in front of the front decks here on the, the front right side and a lot of work still to be done around the green. And just picking a way through it and that's what you need to do. And uh, really the next hole is kind of where, as far as I've gotten, when I'm starting to look at some detail is a par three uphill, which is tough to do because you can't see the green surface. You can see that I've tried to cheat a little bit here and, and make it in a way that you can, sorry, get a hint of that green. Uh, but uh, what I had to do here with the green was really interesting. As I came up and I, I stood on this green, I looked around and what I quickly realized is that if someone was putting on this green, I had this gorgeous vista in the background. Like, look at that vista beyond the green, the, the water in the background, the, the, the canyon there, the, even the clubhouse. But the natural uh, random trees blocked this view. So I went in and I cleared out all these trees, opened up the view, and then I'll probably go back in and add a little bit of some low shrubbery brush type of look to it. And same thing with the view from the green elsewhere. Like, take a, take a look at this this view from this green looking back down on the rest of the golf course. You know, really nice vista. And I'm sure if I can get the angle just right here, um, uh, you can, you can actually see the uh, fire tower that's on the other side of that canyon as well. Uh, should be just coming into view here. Which hill, there it is. Oh, way up at the top of the screen there, you can see that the fire tower is just visible beyond that uh, green as well. So interesting par five I'm starting to work on here. Same idea. I, I had this par five coming from the T decks, uh, going out towards a landing zone. And this is kind of Pebble Beach 18, get a feel to it where you have the option of playing it shorter and getting into the green at two, or you can play it back here, a wider fairway, a little safer shot, depending on what the bunk wind's doing and how the bunker may impact your tee shot. Uh, but you, again, you can see the, the water there. When I first started developing this hole, uh, this whole, this hill was, was as high as it is here on the left side and off on the right as well. And it blocked that view. So I took that view out. I thought I'm going to add a few interesting trees, put some shrubs and do a little bit of planting. I haven't done anything with it yet, but now uh, that's the view you've got in the distance as you're teeing off is you can see a little bit of the water and then you're turning back around and playing into the green. And there's the view there. You're looking at the other side of the hill and, and you're coming to that green with the view of the finishing holes in the clubhouse again with that big, uh, you know that bay in the background so so that's a little bit of the work here on this this course i'm gonna stop it here and then you're not gonna notice the difference but i'm gonna jump right into a look at a course that's not even close to this far that's my west virginia course and and show you what that looks like so just give me a second i'll i'll cue that course up and and show you the the next uh, course i'm working on as well Hi everyone, I'm back again, and I just hit the microphone there, sorry about that, and I'm just going to show you another course I'm working on, the West Virginia course that started out as just raw LiDAR data from a real uh, location in the Smoky Mountains, and wanted to show where I'm at, and, and this is the, <laughs> the, what looks like some kind of medieval clubhouse that's buried in this uh, this landscape, I wanted something big, something bold, because the landscape itself is so big and uh, overwhelming, and this will give you a, a, a a demonstration of what it looks like at the very, very early stages where I'm still trying to figure out rooting and figure out how I can make 18 holes work in this landscape. And I'm just going to show you a little bit around what that looks like. And you can see right off the bat, there's a lot different look than the last course. It looks a little more finished. So my, my clubhouse is up on a hill here. I've got this road that naturally comes in on uh, the real terrain. When I imported the LiDAR data, this road actually did exist that winds itself kind of around the mountain and in. So I've made use of that and uh, built the clubhouse at the end of the road and a little bit of a lake down there. We can see very, very early steps. You can see I don't even have multiple T decks or anything to speak of. And, and I just use placeholders for greens, kind of round oval shapes and fairways get drawn in just to see how the hole plays out. So I'm not sure how I'm going to get people down there yet, but I need to get people from this, this clubhouse. Uh, that uh, has you know decent amount of detail on it already. I've got a few tables and chairs up there, some stairs, some balconies, uh, some railings, some flower plots. You know, it's starting to come together. But how do I get people down to this first tee? That's sorry, that's my 18th green. My first tee. Where are you, first tee? Well, that's a problem if I can't even find the first tee. So I don't have the first tee drawn in yet. That is, uh, I believe, the 18th green that's in place right there. So my thinking is, 
see if I can find the markers for it. Ah, oh, there it is. I can barely see it. I don't know if it's coming into view for you. There it is. I don't even have the T decks drawn yet. So here's where I'm thinking for my first hole. It's going to come down from the, the clubhouse steps there. And uh, you can see where that is compared to the clubhouse. I need to find some elaborate staircase or an elevator to get down there or something. And people are going to fire out into this valley. You're going to go big downhill through uh, all these trees. I might clear out some of the trees. And I'm in the valley somehow. Kind of like a dry gulch. I'm not sure. You can see how rippled things are. I haven't even flattened things out. That's the, the raw data has the terrain looking like that. I have to find some way to, to filter this out. Or if I do go over the stream here, then there's going to be an interesting shot down into the valley with the stream. i got to find some way to climb it back up into this higher elevation because I want to tuck the green up in here. So you can see how, how ridiculous this hole looks. And uh, it's not even playable. Look at that green surface. But I'm trying to get an idea and find holes for greens. I may even back the green up. You can see there's maybe a little more natural spot kind of back in, in over here that you could tuck a green. It might be a yardage thing. I'm still trying to figure out how that looks to me. So I come from this green and I want to get down into another hole. And I believe that that next hole is being played from, there it is. Let me just try something here. If I turn off the viewfinder here, I can get us to a point where, ah, there's the rooting. Now I can see things. So there you go. So there you can see I've drawn in the rooting for the second hole coming up behind that green. And again, playing down across this valley up to a green with kind of this stadium feel to it. Uh, and still trying to figure out how that's going to look for my next hole. Let me just change the view on the side. So I've got six par fours, six threes, and six fives. You know, setting this up as a, 200, a 333 par 4. Sounds short, but it is going to be a, a lot of uphill. Third hole, little par 3 across this little gully up into this little landing area here. Uh, and then we're going to try to step up. There's some really interesting holes here. You know, 4 comes up the hill. The problem I've got with this big, big mountain is I've got to find a way to climb it so I can come back down it, right? That depends on... Uh, where you are. I come to the top of the hill. I've got a mess of holes up here. I got a fifth hole that comes down from the peak actually and slides down to a green down in a little bit of a gulch here. And then I believe six uh, takes a run back. So six is interesting because six plays along the kind of the edge of this uh, this peak. Goes through a couple undulations as you can see that'll obviously be flattened out, cleaned up. You couldn't play golf on that right now, but this is just the rooting stage. But what I thought was interesting is I was having the back nine coming through this same area and trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to tee off people from up here on top of the hill on my 12th hole. And they're going to, they're going to, the elevation is so high and the trajectory of the ball will be so high that they're actually going to be able to fly right over top of the six holes. So I'm going to have two holes crossing, which is kind of unique. And it's going to be a par three that lands down at, you know, 292 feet. But if we look at the, uh, the elevation change there let's take a look we're playing from a t site all the way down to a green site that is 230 feet below your feet and it's 290 yards out there so that's going to be one heck of a, a shot to figure out what you need for yardage but kind of a neat feature playing one hole across another hole i uh, have some challenges with the uh, i believe it's the uh, seventh hole plays down eight eight's been a challenge Trying to come up and around this ridge line. I want to dog leg it. You can see how crazy that looks. This this hill's going to have to be a lot of work with bulldozers on that hill. Carve things down to take me up and dog leg it left and tuck me into this little bit of a, a mountain type of glacier lake here. And uh, and then ninth hole, par three, make use of the water for a hole across the water. These are all just natural trees that have been placed. And then uh, the 10th hole, play back across the water again, and then kind of a little bit of a funny you know, par four, 270 yards, but it's uphill and, and dog leg sharp to the left. Uh, try to make it so you might be able to make a, a hero type of shot in there. And then coming up, this has been a really tough hole, number 11. It, the elevation climb is is absolutely ridiculous. And this is the challenge with topography like this. Some people may say that this course would never truly exist. It definitely would have to be carts only. I'm having a, a par five climb 250 feet and the par five is only 370 yards. And uh, it's been a real challenge creating this thing. And I basically come up with two options for people that you can kind of play a lower trajectory shot, uh, play it up on the right branch of this fairway and then have a, a shot up to the green that way. Or you can play it up on this higher peninsula and be in a, a higher position to come in at the green as well with options available. And still seeing how that one works and not sure I 100% like it. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's part of the game is 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 uh, trying to figure out uh, the rooting. And that's where I'm at. And, you know, 13th hole, things wind through. 14th hole, 15, you come back down the hill here. 
Uh, you're going back down. This is a really interesting hole. This is a 633 yard par five, but it, I think it's also downhill several hundred feet. So you're going to get a lot of carry. You're going to come back up the hill again on 16, 17, and then 18 is going to come from the top of the mountain. Uh, I think I've got a par four here that uh, is a very, very uh, big elevation drop. If I uh, measure this, we can go from the top of the hill down to the bottom here. You can see we are looking at a 450 yard drop. So that makes it really interesting. And if, if I was to, you know, play with that a little bit and, and show you what does that look like for playing a hole. And this is one of the things I do when I'm creating holes is let's, let's tee me off from up here. You can actually play from up here and uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see where it thinks. So there's where my driver is going to be 200 yards down. I, uh, I think that uh, realistically that the balls can actually carry farther over. So I'm going to, I'm going to put on a trajectory more towards the green. Let's see where this thing lands. I think you can hit the hit a green that's uh, that far away. Oh, we got a tree in the way, so I'm going to have to curve it around the tree a little bit. Let's see if this works for me. This might be crazy, but but part of the planning stage is this playing it up and take a look at that. We've got a 350 yard carry. And if that was fairway, we've got a 400 yard drive. Who doesn't want a 400 yard drive on the final hole to make it interesting? Heck, if I can make that ball, ball run right to the green, that'll be really, really cool. But uh, try not to make it too gimmicky, but also trying to make it really interesting with the train and making use of it. We, we're in the mountains. Let's make use of it as best we can. And and uh, obviously there's a, a the tight balance there between what's realistic and not. And I think that's where I, I try to come in as a, as a superintendent. I, I know what's realistic for maintaining and I, I have to fine tune it. So this course is a long ways from being done, but I really wanted to give you an example of what it looks like when you are, um, you know, at different stages of creating a golf course and where these two projects are. Cause I know that a, a few people have asked me uh, how they're, they're playing out and, and, uh, that's where they're at. So you can see this one's a long ways away. This one is maybe a week or two in with some rooting that I did back in December. Uh, this course is still at least two to three months away. If I started working on it today, which I won't because I'm working on the other, uh, course uh, right now. So, so this one is likely going to be, you know, we're looking at a spring summer release and it's hard to imagine because that's in, in real terms of building golf courses, you know, that's, uh, that's a lot of work can be done in the real world in that amount of time. So, but that's what happens when uh, you want to put everything you can into, into a golf course. So I hope these uh, two different courses were good examples for you to get an idea of where, where, uh, where course development goes from early rooting stages to final considerations for planting, sight lines, playability, that type of thing. And, and hopefully it keeps you going on your project. I know lots of people are working on courses out there that, uh, that uh, you put a lot of work into and, uh, and uh, hopefully not getting back into a little bit of time to play some courses and, and do some more reviews. But until then, I will uh, let you go and uh, good luck with your own courses. Hope this was helpful or inspires you to keep on uh, plugging away. And uh, until next time, take care and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.